All right, hey painting friends. My name is Stoof. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to do an acrylic painting of a landscape in West Virginia. I created a painting of this reference photo before in 2018, um, but it is now 2024 and I think my skills have gotten a little bit better since then. <laughs> and today I'm going to recreate that painting and turn it into a tutorial for you guys. So we are using acrylic paints today. I'm working on an eight inch by 10 inch canvas panel. I'm just gonna put it right down there. The paint colors for today are titanium white, blue, if you have a cobalt blue, that would work very well there. Uh, some of these brands of paint are like the economic, uh, budget friendly brands. Um, so I'm just, I just wanted to get a wider range of colors some of them are also the nicer brand paints though. Uh, so this is phthalo blue here. This is light ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, permanent green medium, burnt umber, cadmium yellow medium, phthalo green. This one's called tanned. This is azurite blue. This one is light Hansa yellow. Um, this one is called dark green. It's one of those, um, budget friendly brand. So it's got some other colors mixed in there. Uh, this one is Terra Verde. This is spring green. This one is dioxazane purple. And I have a little bit of a naphthal red down there as well. Other materials I have today are my cup of water, some paper towels for cleaning off my brushes. I also have these brushes. I'm just going to use these for today. I have a uh, about a half inch flat tip brush. I have a liner brush that's a little bit, a little bit frayed there, uh, but it'll it'll work for me. I have a number two. Oh, this is a number four flat tip brush actually, so a smaller flat tip brush, and this is a number one or two round tip brush. All right, to get started with this painting, the first thing I want to do is dip my number two. Uh, round tip brush in the water, and then I'm just going to dip it in a little bit of phthalo blue. Uh, I'm just going to put a little crosshair about where center is, or a little dot, uh, just so I have an idea of that. And then I'm going to put my mountain ridge about here. Coming down, it uh, comes down right at about center on this side maybe actually a little higher. So kind of like this. And we're going to have trees on here later. I'm just getting the general shape of the ridge. And I've got another ridge that comes past center behind it. There comes up higher than this one from left to right from top to bottom on the left side or the right side. Uh, and then we've got another couple over ridges back here, there's like a bit of a like bubble ridge in there, kind of comes up a little bit. And then we have this one back here. I think I want this one to come up just a little bit more. And same with this one. I want this to come up a bit more on that side. All right. And then after this guy, there's another one right here. It just barely goes over this one. It comes out there and a little guy right here between and then there's just another, whoa. <laughs> we'll have to paint over that. It got a little too dark for me. A couple more ridges in the back here. All right, so we know where those ridges are. In the middle ground and foreground, we've got over center, this kind of follows the tree line. Got some bushes in here. And it's cleared until about here. The trees are all in here. 
And then we've got a few bushes in the middle there. Uh, there is another ridge just under center. Comes up to about there. And there's some bushes on there. We'll add those in later. Uh, there's some trees in this little valley. And then right at the foreground here, we've got some grasses. And we're going to have some little flowers just kind of in the corner down there. And then there's a tree. Comes to about here. Right there. All right, so I got a general layout of the painting. I'm gonna clean off that brush, and then I'm gonna switch to my, I'm actually, instead of using this brush, I'm gonna use a flat tip brush that's just a little smaller. That'll just help me work in details a little bit more. So we're gonna use this brush instead. Uh, but this is same type of brush. And to get started with the sky, I'm gonna take some of my Light ultramarine, white, and thalo. I'm gonna put a little bit of ochre in there. Make it even lighter. Maybe a little bit of this blue. And I wanna make it even lighter because it's going to dry just a little bit darker. And then over, actually, that thinking I want that even lighter. <laughs> so it's mixed in a little more white. I'm just going to start right at the top of the tree or the horizon line where the mountains meet the sky. Don't want to leave any white space there. I want to cover up all of the canvas. And once I get that all filled in, I'm gonna go back and forth with my brush over what I just put down. Um, and I go all the way up to the top of the canvas. And then we're gonna work some clouds into this in a little bit. Got some good coverage there. I'm gonna take white and a little bit of the cobalt blue type of color. And I just wanna go over that bottom part just to lighten that up some more. And this is gonna be something that uh, isn't going to work the same way for everybody. If you put a lot of paint down, you might not be getting this same type of blend that I have. Um, and if you didn't use enough paint, then it might be overpowering. So I'm just taking a little bit more, just pure white and letting that blend in. Just to keep a nice little painterly cloud type of look, leaving some of those brush strokes in here. In general, I want this to be a bit more of a painterly painting where you can see the brush strokes. Not quite photorealistic. Uh, okay. So I'm liking that so far. Uh, now I can start to add in some of the clouds. Uh, and for the clouds, I'm gonna start with some of the shadows under the clouds. I'm gonna actually switch to my smaller flat tip brush. And to get the shadowy bases of these clouds, I'm gonna take some light ultramarine, a little bit of purple, doxazine purple, some phthalo blue, and some ochre. Gonna mix in more doxazine purple and just keep fiddling around with the, mixing a bit of blue in here as well. Just um, playing around with the different bits of paint here, different ratios until I am happy. And we have the sky color right next to it, so it's good to see value here. 
just mix a little bit more blue in. A little bit of white. All right, and I'm pretty happy with that, so I'm going to start to block in some clouds. I think I, I, think I want a little bit more thalo blue. All right, blocking in some of these clouds here. And the paint is still wet on the canvas, so it's going to blend for me. At first, I'm just putting these colors down, and then uh, I'll start to get a softer blend after I get this shadow put down. I use a little more phthalo blue and mix it, making it a little bit darker in value for the shadow at the top. All right, now I'm just going to take the extra paint off my brush on my napkin and I'm going to blend some of these shadows in with the, or so, yeah, some of the shadows on the clouds in with the sky behind it. Just very gently pushing the brush back and forth and switching up the direction of the brush a little bit. Very gently pressing here to try to get that to blend a little more softly. very gently going back and forth right at the base where I want these clouds to be. Just softening all the edges. All right, I like that. Now I'm going to add some highlights to my clouds. So I'm just going to clean that brush off. Still using that flat tip brush. I'm going to take some white with a little bit of that tanned color and a tiny bit of that yellow Hansa. And we'll just put these on here. Just push it, like plopping the brush down and letting it like dapple on there. And then also pushing the brush a little bit once it's down on the canvas just to get a little bit more coverage with the paint using different amounts of pressure and I'm starting out with this and then I'm going to build up the highlights Pushing the paint around once I get that little highlight down. I don't want to have like a perfect, even, symmetrical coverage. Like it's going to vary a little bit, like it would in a natural sky. And we got that down for now. Uh, now let's take a little more white, tiny bit more of that Hansa yellow and tanned color. Maybe a little bit more of the tanned. And we can start to build up our highlights some more. Just pushing the paint around, letting it get on the canvas gently and not using a whole lot of pressure to get those highlights to fuzz out softly.
All right, we can take more. It's pure white. And then a couple little highlights on top of those highlights to just keep building up the depth. just got the extra paint off my brush and now I'm blending in some of those little highlights. All right, I think it looks pretty good. I'm just gonna let that sky sit for a little while. Just wanna touch up this one spot up here. Maybe add a little bit more purple and blue. A little bit of umber. And then we'll just boost the shadow on this guy just to show that this cloud is in front of the other one. And that sky's looking pretty good. I'm going to just touch on that one little thing there. Uh, now we can move to the mountains in the background. So I'm gonna start with my just blue and white. A little bit of purple. And we'll do a little bit of ochre. The ochre helps to mute down the um, saturation. Okay, I'll take a little more white. Maybe a little bit of phthalo blue in there too. And let's see, maybe a little perp, uh, pink tanned color. A little more white. So I want my value to be just a little, yep, perfect. Just a little bit darker than the sky. So I'm just putting this mountain in. I can lighten it up even a little bit more because it's going to dry a hair darker. And now that I've got that ridge in there, I want to just soften that edge because it's so far in the distance that we wouldn't really perceive that as a crisp edge. It would be a little fuzzy. All right, and now that that's in there, let's work, keep working our way to the foreground with the mountain ridges. And if you happen to leave any white space between your sky and your mountain ridges, this is, would be a good time to fill that in. And the mountain ridges all have like a lighter valley than they do a peak. So you can mix in a little bit more white for the lower valley part of each ridge. Okay, as we're moving closer, we're gonna to start to get a little bit more saturated. So I'm gonna mix a little bit more phthalo blue and oxazine purple, a little bit of umber. Um, let's do a little of that light ultramarine blue too. And this next one, come up about right here. And you want it to be slightly more saturated and slightly darker in value than the ridge behind it. So 
So we're getting more contrast and more colors and more warm colors even as we're getting closer to the foreground. All right, I filled in that one. I'm just gonna take a little bit of white with the uh, paint on my brush, fill in the valley with a little bit lighter value. All right, looks good. <clears throat> I'm gonna mix in more umber and phthalo blue. I think I did a little too much umber, so I'm gonna go back to the phthalo blue and I'll do a little bit of phthalo green and some purple and some white. Just do a little bit more of our ultramarine, light ultramarine blue. Okay. And we've got this little ridge here. Just lighten up the base there, the valley. Okay, I'm gonna, I see I missed a spot back here, so I'm just gonna fill that in with some white and blend it up. All right, and then next I'm gonna stick with that color, but maybe a little bit more purple. And get this ridge line painted in. Mix a bit of our dark green color in there. And then I see that over here, I actually need to go back with my uh, ridge that's even farther in the distance. So I'm gonna take my ultramarine, light ultramarine and white, and just put a couple, maybe a little bit of phthalo blue in there too. And just put a couple little ridges back in here. And they get really far in the distance here where they almost just blend right into the sky. So I'm using a color that's very close to the sky for these ones. Just mixing a little bit of white in with the little valleys for these ones. All right, that looks nice. Okay, now we can come back to this ridge here. Just keep looking at my reference photo and then back at my painting to see how the mountain ridge line looks in the painting compared to the reference photo, making sure the angles are accurate. All right, I'm gonna mix in a little more phthalo blue and white for the bottom part. Just blending that up to the ridge. And I'm pushing in a different angle so it shows that um, we have some foliage on the mountain. 
I'm going to mix a little more Thala Blue in for this one. And a little more Thala Blue and Doxas in Purple. Mix in some of that dark green color. With white. And I'm just filling that in. And take some more white and phthalo blue. Because we've got some little highlights back in here. And I'll mix a little spring green in there. As we start to move closer. And this ridge is just going to have a little variation from the one behind it. Going to make some more Thala blue in. Uh, with a little bit of indigo. And let's do a little bit of blue. And a little bit of purple. And I'll just get this little ridge painted in there. So you can see I'm starting to mix a little bit more greens in as we're moving closer to the foreground. Do you want to just touch up this one real quick? Just softening that one up a little. All right, and then back here we've got a lighter valley. A little bit lighter at the base of this one too. And more of that blue color in this one. Maybe a little bit more blue, tiny bit of naphthol red. All right, we've got the shape of that looking pretty good. Uh, and then we got this ridge here. It's a similar color. I'm just going to mix a little bit more thalo and my light ultramarine and then a little thalo green. And a little umber. I'm going to mix more thalo blue and naphthol too because this one's a little darker. Has a little peak there, comes up a bit more, and then stays kind of flat, like a very slight downward angle, I'd say. I just want to fill that in, take a little bit more white for the base part. And it just softly kind of transitions into that valley there. Okay, I'm going to switch to my little bit larger flat tip brush next and we can start to work on this ridge which is quite a bit closer now. Uh, we're going to start with some thalo 
and some of our terra verde. And we'll do some thalo green. And some ochre. And some purple. Ooh, not that much. <laughs> and let's go back to my thalo green again. And that is pretty dark. That's that's more like the colors in the shadows. Um, so just to get like a neutral color, I'm going to mix in a little bit more white and terra verde. I'll do a little spring green too. And we'll just start with this as more of a base. And then we'll start to um, kind of mix a little bit of that azurite in there too. Uh, and then once I get this base in here, I'm going to start to add my shadows. A little bit stronger. All right, so I'm getting the ridge line here. It's making it go up nice and high. I made it a little bit steeper than how it is in the painting, but I think that's uh, it's more of the way we perceive it. Uh, that, like the photo tends to make peaks look a little bit less steep. All right, I'm going to use a little bit more of the deeper shadow color at the base in this one. And just lightly going back and forth with the brush, making sure I fill in any extra little white spaces there. Gonna mix in some umber. And then this part of the ridge is more in shadow. So I'm gonna take my phthalo blue and my purple and white and that's going to be and a little bit of umber too, and that's what's going to be the color here. I'm just taking the brush and pushing around at the edge a little bit to show that we've got some trees. And the shadow just kind of goes to about there. All right, that's good. Um, let's get a few more other shadows. And with some umber and some thalo green. And I'm just taking the brush and pushing it around. Just dabbing it, trying to get different angles of the brush to put some paint down. It's starting to give me a little bit of the look of a tree line on the ridge there. It's not just a flat line anymore. We can start to see some of the trees. And I'm going to take more phthalo blue and umber. And I'm going to deepen some shadows, start to just dab around adding shadows over that base color that I put down. And this is going to be all the little shadows from the trees. Mix a little more purple and phthalo. And I'm going to let that dry for a little bit and uh, then I'll start to add some highlights. While we're waiting for that to dry, I'm going to take my green, permanent green, and some umber. And we're going to put that right here. You can see that's a bit more of a translucent color, so we might have to build up a little more with this color. 
And I'm going back and forth more loosely for the ridge line here because these trees are even bigger. Can add a little more umber. Let's do umber, thalo, and yellow, cad yellow. And we'll put that color down here. So we have even deeper shadows now. I'm gonna make this ridge come up a bit more there. Now let's take some more thalo. It's a pretty deep shadow right in here. And I'm just taking the brush and pushing it, pulling it down so you can see that little shadow from the uh, trees there. Okay. And I'll move this way a bit more. Take some terra verde, umber, and the yellow, ochre, and just build up a little bit of color over here. Can take a little bit of our light ultramarine blue, put that in right behind this tree. And then this tree is gonna have more umber and cad yellow medium, a little bit of purple maybe, right down here where it's in shadow. And then the top of the tree is more highlighted, so I'm gonna take my green, permanent green with light yellow, Hansa, and I'm just gonna quickly put a couple little highlights there just so I know this tree is separate from that all the ridge behind it. Okay, and this is starting to get more tacky now, so I'm gonna switch to my smaller round tip brush and we'll start to add some little highlights on there. So I'm going to start with white and I mix in a little bit of spring green, a little bit of our permanent green, and some azurite. And let's do some terra verde too. Let's see how this goes. Remember this is in shadow right here. So I'm starting these highlights in the sun to the right of that section. And I'm just adding some highlights to show the tops of some trees. You don't want to completely cover this whole section. You want to make like little uh, soft, like the letter N almost. Just little bumps over your shadows. Mixing a little more terra verde. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more permanent green, medium too. So the goal of adding these highlights is to just have a highlight. It's not supposed to take over the whole section that you've been working on. We put that base layer down first and that's like a middle value. And then we put in some shadows and now we're adding a highlight which 
should help to give it the most depth. And you can repeat these steps if you want. If you think you overdid the highlights or uh, overdid the shadows or something, then you can always go back to a section and start to add more layering up. So if you think there's just it's too bright now, then you could go back with that middle tone, go back with some shadows again, and then just taking just straight up terra verte here. It's a little darker down here. Yeah, and then you can just keep layering up till you're happy with your sections. So I'm just gonna take a little bit more ultramarine and I can build up some shadows a bit more in here just so it doesn't look perfectly symmetrical. Like we wanna have sections with a little bit more shadow a little bit deeper shadows in some areas. Okay, and then for this area that is in shadow, but still has some highlights, we're gonna take some blue with some, uh, some phthalo blue with some of that light ultramarine blue and a little bit of permanent green now let's see how that looks. So see, it's lighter in value, but it's cooler than that highlight of trees in the sun. You can take even more white. A couple of those little spots there. And you can build up your shadows again if you need to. All right, it looks good. I might build up even more little highlights. It's a little bit of ochre, cad yellow medium. Just in a couple little spots here. Okay, I like that. Uh, let's move. I'm just gonna touch up that one back there a little bit with a little bit of white and my light ultramarine blue, a little bit of phthalo, and that other green. Let's do a little more white. Just wanna start to add a little bit of something there so it looks like we can see a little bit of the detail in the trees, but not a whole lot. And we can do a little bit more shadow in there too, just to Give a little bit more dimension. I think that looks pretty good. Okay. Next, let's move up. We're gonna do the same thing we did right here to these trees. We're just gonna add a little bit more of our warmer greens and yellows. So the Permanent green isn't really on the warm side, but we don't want it to be too warm just yet. The spring green is definitely a warm green. So there's a warm and cool version of every color. Uh, okay, I like that. So just yeah, play around with your greens and yellows until you feel like you got a color that's uh, lighter in value than the ridge behind it. Get some more white in there. So that's a lot lighter in value now. And same thing, I'm just taking the brush and just going back and forth 
Starting to add in a ridge line here. Some highlights on the ridge line, not adding in. The ridge line was already there. <laughs> Just going back and forth. This area is going to be in shadow, uh, but it's going to be warmer than that shadow behind it. So I'm going to mix in white, terra verde, my permanent green, medium, and let's do some ochre. And let's see how that looks. I think I want more indigo and spring green and yellow medium. How's that look? It's better. Now I want it to come down in value, so I'm going to mix in some of my dark green and more of my permanent green medium and some umber. And I got a little dark green value, so I'll go with that. You can mix in a little bit of uh, phthalo green as well. And just going over that ridge. Adding some highlights and shadow. Gonna mix in a little more umber. And yellow. Okay, and <clears throat> for the areas in shadow, we're going to mix in a bit more of our umber into that, just so it brings the color less saturated and uh, darker in value. And then as I'm getting closer to the bottom, just using a little less pressure with the brush so that it can uh, kind of fade out into that shadow color. Gonna mix a little bit more phthalo blue in. Okay, and then I'll add some highlights over here on the left. Similar color that I had back there. I'm just going to mix in a little bit more yellow Hansa and spring green and white. Maybe a little bit of my light ultramarine blue. I got some highlights put on there pretty quickly. Uh, now let's go in and deepen the shadows on some of these. First, I'm just touching up the highlights a little bit there. Okay, now we can deepen the shadows. So we're gonna take more phthalo blue some terra verde and just 
kind of go in between some of where the trees are starting to form. Kind of makes a little bit of light ultramarine in there too. Just a little bit. Okay, and we can take a little more umber. And I want to uh, add a bit more shadow to some of these little trees in here. So I'm just pushing the paint around, very gently pressing to get a little bit more definition and separation from the trees. up some of my shadows in this cluster of trees. And now I want to just add a couple more little highlights with yellow Hansa white, a little bit of ochre to boost the highlights of these trees in the sun so they stand out a little bit more. You can tell these are in sun and those are in shadow. Alright, that looks nice there. Okay, moving forward. I'm going to switch to my flat tip brush again and I'm going to use my permanent green medium and my yellow and tan color and light ultramarine blue. How does that look? It looks pretty nice. Just going to fill that in this whole area here. And it's a bit in shadow towards the back, so we'll paint that in in a little bit here. <clears throat> Just mixing in more umber and thalo and um, white and a little bit of that dark green color, a little bit of ochre. And that'll give us a little bit more of the color and shadow. I think I'm going to add a little bit of purple and more permanent green. Now let's do some thalo green too. A little bit of Hansa. Yeah, it looks good. Just bring this right up to the tree line there. You don't want it to be a perfect straight line. You want to have a little bit of the tree line visible. A little bit of the variations in depth. Okay, and then I'm just going to lightly drag the paintbrush over so that that translucent paint can get covered up there. Alright, so in general we got that blocked in. I'm going to take more yellow Hansa and white and my other yellow and just make this a little bit warmer.
That comes down on this side of the tree. Just blending that up into my other greens there. So we're getting more greens and yellows getting closer to the foreground. We have more purple and blue in the far background. Uh, now that I put those down, I'm going to let that dry for a little bit and then I'll start to go back and add the bushes and uh, little shorter trees in there. There's a ridge here I want to add in. So I'm going to mix in more white and some th uh, light ultramarine blue for this little ridge. It's definitely lighter, but it's cooler. And we've got some little uh, bushes on there too. Take some of my green. And I'll take some more umber. Just put that in right there. Just pushing the paint around, not using a whole lot of force. And we can let this kind of transition into that field. And then more thalo, purple down here. I'm going to separate these a little bit right there. Let's put a little shadow. All right. And then here we've got more little trees in that valley. So I mixed my permanent green with my thalo green and umber. And I'm going to mix some red in there. And that just kind of gave me a brown color, which I did a little too much red. So we're just going to take some more thalo green right next to that. and some ochre. And some indigo. And a little bit of that cad yellow medium color. And I'm just gonna get that, use that nice deep green, start to paint in some shadows. So I'm just pushing the paint around different directions, getting my look of trees. And that's about how far it goes there. Gonna use the bit with a more with more crimson to get these little branches. And again, just pushing the paint around. Very gently, don't look too much on my brush. Okay. Uh, while that is drying a little more, let's just use the smaller brush and start to put in some of the grasses here. Um, for the grasses, I'll use Terra Verde and Thalo Green and some of that yellow. Ochre, tans, light ultramarine. That seems like a good base color. Maybe I use a little bit more phthalo green. A little bit of umber. That's pretty good as a base. 
So I'm mostly just going up and down with my brush strokes here, trying to fill in all the white space. And you can hold the brush at a different angle to get the look of grasses. So I'll get a little bit more detail in with those later. I'm starting out with a mid-tone that's on the darker side. So it's not, I'm not starting with my highlights. I'm starting with the darker shadows in the grass. And then we'll build up more highlights and color later. Okay, I'm gonna take a little more phthalo blue, phthalo green, and umber. And just put in some pretty deep shadows right at the foreground here. Do a little more umber, some yellow, yellow Hansa. And we want to have a good variation here. You don't want to use the same mixture of color for this whole base because by mixing up the colors a little bit, we're getting a uh, range. So that's going to show like we've got different plants in here. It's not all exactly one type of grass. And then when you go to add your highlights on top of things, you can use variations in your colors there too. And that'll really help to give more depth to your grasses in the foreground. Okay. I got the grasses in there. Now I'm going to put that brush back. I'm going to switch back to my number four flat tip brush. And now I can start to add some of the detail in this section. And we're going to work pretty quickly and painterly here. I'm just mixing in my umber with, and a little bit of yellow and some phthalo blue, some regular blue, a little bit of purple. I'm just trying to get a darker shadow color that's not quite as dark as the shadows in these trees. And I'm just gonna start to add some little bushes and shrubs in here kind of starts to cover up that tree line a little bit so it's not as harsh of a uh, line there between the field and the forest. bit more umber and phthalo blue and uh, napsal red. Building up a little deeper shadows in some of these. Few more shadows in here. Make sure that your shadows don't go over this little ridge because we got some more plants on that ridge there. We want to separate these two. Mixing in more phthalo blue. This right here. Another little 
little shrub right in there. Okay, more umber for the shadows in this tree. Okay, now we can do some highlights in there. So I'm gonna take my yellow Hansa white mixture and just mix on a little bit more white. And we'll just start to add some of these little highlights on here. These ones are definitely lighter than the ones behind them. And they're lighter in value than the grass. I'm gonna mix in a little more ochre for this tree. white can build up those highlights a little bit more later uh, for now we'll just keep working on these highlights I'll take some more of my green medium and a little bit of phthalo green. So these ones are not quite as bright. They're kind of in shadow with the trees in the forest. We can even use some of this dark green color Looks nice. You can add a few little highlights on the shadow side of the trees with that green, dark green color. Okay. And what else can we add here? Let's do, just touch that up a bit. Uh, there's a little bit of a shadow on the ground from these trees. So I'm going to mix my purple with phthalo green, a little bit of yellow, and we'll just block in some shadows. Fuzzing them out a little bit. Okay, we'll add some highlights to this tree. Some white, more ochre. We need this tree's highlights to be lighter in value than the highlights of the trees in the forest behind it. those on there. Let me just add a couple little spots there. And then I'm going to get a mid value. It's like still kind of a highlight, but not quite as bright. Uh, I just mix my spring green and my 
tanned and I'm going to mix a little bit of the green, permanent green. I'll do a little bit of uh, umber in there as well. All right, now I'm gonna go and put a deeper shadow. Let's do some umber, thalo blue, and thalo green, and more umber, maybe a little bit of red. And I just wanna go back in and Retouch up some of the shadows on this tree. Adding a couple little highlights in the shadow on the tree. Can add more of the bright highlights on top of this again, just to keep building up that depth. Okay, it looks good. Just mixing a bit of brown into here so it gives a little bit more depth. Not quite as flat. All right, there's that tree. We got these guys in here. Let's start to add some of these. I'm gonna take my permanent green with some ochre. And just add some bushes on this little hillside. All right, we're gonna mix some purple with phthalo green and spring green. And umber. And a little bit of yellow, just to warm that up. And start to add some shadows on this side of each tree. Shrub, bush, whatever these are. <laughs> it's pretty dark right down on this side. So now I've got all the white covered on the canvas, so that's good. Okay, and let's add some shadows on the ground with phthalo green. And ochre. Do a little more ochre, umber, tanned. Okay, permanent green with some brown. Looks good. All right, I'm gonna take some white with some Hansa. A little bit of that cad yellow deep. I just wanna, maybe not quite that bright. I wanna brighten up this little ridge that's in the sun. I'm just getting the extra paint off my brush there and pushing the paint around a little more so it gives that rough texture. 
Now we can lighten up little bits of the grass in there too. That looks nice. I'm going to highlight these bushes here a little more with a little permanent green and cad yellow light. Keeping these nice and bright. And as we move down, I want to get them a little bit darker. So I'm mixing a little bit of yellow and green and umber. Okay, and I'm just going to build up the shadows a little more. I want to have a deeper shadow down here. Okay, looks good. And now let's go back to these little trees down here that are mostly covered by the uh, gra grasses. Just mixing ochre with our permanent green and white. And we'll just um, let me let me add a little bit more shadow right there first, so that'll separate the two a bit more. They won't stand out. They will stand out from each other a little bit more. Okay, got my highlight again. Just starting to put that down here for some of these little trees. Do more yellow and permanent green. Get more of that springtime green. Okay, that looks nice. Then for the shadows on that one, go back to our phthalo blue and phthalo green. Add in a little bit of that cad yellow and some brown. And my paint's starting to get a little tacky now. It's been a little over an hour or so. Your paint might be drying out, but the nice thing about acrylic paint is when it does dry out, you can always layer over whatever you put down. I'm going to put a little bit more of that yellow. There we go. Just adding more shadows to these trees right here. Keeping most of the shadows on the left or the right side because our light source is kind of from over this direction. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that so far. Uh, now I'm going to go in with the grasses, adding some details there. So I'm going to use my liner brush and we can do this pretty quick. We can take some white. with our terra verde and I want to get a good amount of water on here so the paint's nice and thin so when I go with the brush like this I can get I want to mix in a little bit more purple because I want these to stand out from the background and just make semi-circle marks with the brush and that'll give you your grasses. And if it's not giving you this look, you might need to put a little more water on your brush. But at the same time, it's you got to find a happy medium because if you put too much paint water on the brush, then it'll end up uh, like dripping on your canvas and that doesn't look 
So great. All right, I'm gonna take a little bit more of my spring green. And white. And add some nice highlights for these grasses over here. Just let these ones carry on over to the taller ones that we put in. And we'll end up layering over that later. I've got some little flowers back in here. I'm just gonna dab a few of those little flowers or whatever these are in here. Just mix a little bit of a umber into there to give a little shadow. All right, we can mix a little bit of purple and yellow in again. Just give us a little bit more. Uh, you know what? Let's mix in some phthalo green. It's right here, nice and cool green. Very pretty. I'll just put a few of these in random little spots. Let's take some more umber with the phthalo green. Get some deeper shadows in here. Then you can layer over that with more highlights. Some more white and yellow. Just keep building these up in here. Mixing a little bit of my light ultramarine. I'm gonna put this back up there so I can get the base. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my smaller round brush, take my permanent green and some ochre. I'm just gonna start to put in a couple little other little plants that aren't tall grasses. And just push the brush around. Let them start to cover up some of the grasses. Just mix a little bit of umber in there to get a little darker at the bottom corner of the canvas there. And we can add some highlights with some yellow Hansa.
I am bringing this down a bit. I'm gonna add a little phthalo green too. Cadula medium, just pushing the paint around the brush, adding these little leaves. Okay, and then I can just add a few more uh, grasses with my liner brush again. And here you can put some in front of these. Do a little more ochre, Do a little more purple. All right, and then we'll take a little bit more yellow, white, and I'll just add a few little lighter branches where we're going to have some flowers. Before I put the flowers in though, I'm going to take just white with that little bit of green on my brush. I'm going to add some highlights to some of these blades of grass. They're going to dry not as obviously white uh, because I thinned the paint down a little bit. So I'm going to just put those on there and then they should be a little bit less intense once the paint dries. But it helps to have those little highlights just to get the grasses to stand out a little more. And some of them have little seeds at the top. Mix a little ochre. All right, yeah, that looks nice. Uh, now I can add in my little flowers. I'm gonna use my round tip brush for that. I want it to be nice and clean. And we're going to take white and a little bit of the tanned color. And a little bit of yellow Hansa. I'm gonna start a new little mixing spot because I put a little too much color in there. But that is the color now. We're just gonna just add a couple little dabs of paint for the petals. And your flowers aren't all gonna look the same shape depending on how they're oriented towards the sun. They're not all gonna be right next to each other. Some might be more on top of each other. Just putting this base color down for now. For each flower. And then I'll add more uh, shadows and highlights later. Some of them just have little dots or it's like a bud that hasn't opened yet. Okay, that looks nice. And now I can add in a little bit more of the shadows and stuff. So I'm mixing some purple with my ochre a little bit of my light ultramarine, and a little Hansa. We just want like a neutral 
shadow color here. It's kind of like a muted gray purple. Uh, and we'll just put this at the base of some of these flowers. You can cover up some of them with that color if the whole flower is going to be in shadow more. Mix in a little more blue. Let's put some more in shadow. And now that those are there, we can take our yellow and our ochre. And just add a nice little dot to the center of some of these. They're just like cute little daisies. And you're not going to see the dot on every single one. All right, and then I'm going to go back with my yellow Hansa and start to add a few more little stems coming down from the flowers. If you want it to be a little bit more accurate, you can use your liner brush. Uh, I'm going to start to add some little leaves too. And then I'm going to take my yellow, let's build up the leaves for this plant in the foreground in front of those. And then I'm going to add some more shadow at the base of these. So as you can see, that white that I put down has dried uh, much more calmly. <laughs> it's not quite as bright of a white. Uh, so now the painting's basically done. The final steps I'm going to do off camera are just touch up a bit of the highlights here and there to bring a little more depth to the painting. Uh, but overall, that is the result. I hope you enjoyed this painting tutorial. This is a landscape scene of the hills in West Virginia. If you have recommendations for future painting tutorials, you can leave a comment under this video and I'll add them to my list of things to paint. All right guys, that is a finished painting. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and happy painting to you.